probably seen lots of needle felted cats and animals with long fur and wondered how do they do that? Well I'm going to show you how I attached fur to this cat to take it from this to this. Don't forget beards. Oh yes, thanks Santa. Yes, you can also needle felt beards and hair in the same way. Oh, and later in the video I'll show you how I added the whiskers and the eyebrow whiskers. So to start with, the first thing to do is to make sure the base you're felting the fur into is quite firm, so that when you add the fur, the shape doesn't change. First, we're going to add some white merino roving or tops wool to the white front area of the cat's chest, which is in the shape of a V. So pull some strands of white merino roving and lay them onto your mat so that you have a thin layer. I'm going to start at the bottom of the chest where the V-shape is narrowest. I've cut these pieces into equal lengths. Don't worry if they look too long, we're going to trim them later. Take a very small amount of the white fur that we've prepared and place it onto the cat's front with the strands going vertically so that the middle of the strands are sat over the very bottom of the V-shape. And starting at the left hand point, stab all along in a line across the front of the cat. Notice how I'm holding the needle at a slight angle to the right. I recommend you use the finest felting needle you have, or a 46 gauge crown needle if you have one. The 46 crown is good for attaching hair or fur, as it has barbs right at the tip of the needle. You will need to go over this line at least three or four times to make sure it's well attached. Then fold the wool down and stab along the fold three or four more times to make sure that the fur is firmly rooted onto the base. You don't want your cat to be shedding fur everywhere. You don't get any of that kind of nonsense with me. No, that is something at least. This can take a bit of practice and be a bit fiddly at times, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Place the next row of fur about an eighth of an inch above the last line you needle felted. So if I jump ahead here, you can see how down the side there's about three millimetres or an eighth of an inch between each row of fur. This would be right for this small cat, but if your animal is larger, you can afford to make the rows further apart. I'd encourage you to have a go and experiment. Maybe needle felt a practice ball and cover it with fur. Going back to where I was up to, you can see that with each row that I'm adding, the width of the wool pieces is getting wider as we come up the cat's chest. This is to create the V-shape of white wool. Carry on adding rows until you've covered the whole area, right up to under her chin. Wow, nice beard. That's not a beard, although it does look a bit odd at this stage, but don't worry, we'll sort that out next. So now we're going to trim all this fur so that it's a bit shorter. Before doing that, I find it easier to tease all the fur out away from the body with my needle so that you can see the length of it. Once you've done that, you might want to wrap your felted object in a plastic food bag. This will protect the black area of the cat from getting covered in bits of white wool that we trim off. Using a pair of really sharp scissors, start trimming by taking off the really long pieces to make it all a similar length. Then cutting inwards towards the cat, trim a small amount at a time to shorten the length of the fur. How much you trim off will vary depending on the length of the fur for the particular animal you're felting, whilst also making sure it's in relation to the size of your animal. Please don't forget to click the like button if you're enjoying this content. By doing this you'll help other needle felters find this video. Tease the fur out again using your needle to check you've cut it evenly and to see how long it is. Here I decide to take some more off the length of the fur as this is such a small cat. Then comb it back down with your needle to check how it looks now that you've trimmed it. This will show any areas that need a bit more trimming, like I've spotted down the left hand side here. Notice how I'm cutting upwards into the fur and not across to give a more natural look to the edge of the white fur. We don't want it to look like a basin cut. You can keep trimming it until it's the length you want it to be. But don't forget, you can't stick it back on. In a moment, I'll show you how I attach the fur to the cat's head. But first, I used exactly the same technique, but with black merino roving or tops wool for the tail. Laying short lengths of wool along the tail and attaching the wool in rings around the tail. Moving up the tail and spacing the rings of wool out by about a quarter of an inch or six millimetres. Notice that the tail I'm applying fur onto is quite thin and narrow. This is to allow for the extra thickness that attaching this fur will give. So please be aware when you're shaping your animal that they will look much bigger once fur is added. The last ring of wool was almost attached to the body of the cat. This helped to blend it into the body and I trimmed it in the same way as the cat's white front. Before adding black fur to the face, I put two small balls of white 
bevel just below the nose to make this area a bit more defined. Then I cut some more lengths of black merino roving or tops and cut them into short lengths about a half to three quarters of an inch long. Then starting at the bottom of the face on one side I'm going to lay the lengths of fur vertically and stabbing a line horizontally across the side of the cat's head. I work my way up spreading out the rose and angling the rose slightly upwards towards the ear until I reach the eye. You might find it helpful to trim some of this fur as you go along or you can wait until you've attached it all whichever you find easiest. Above the eye I attached a couple of very short rows of fur by laying wool across from the nose to the cheek and stabbing in a line from the eye up to the ear. Here you can see how much wider the right side of the cat's face looks compared to the left just because of the fur I've attached. I repeated this process for the left hand side of the face, this time waiting until I'd attached all the fur before trimming it with scissors. The next task is the whiskers. Again, because this cat is so small I needed something that was quite fine so that the whiskers look in proportion to the cat. So I decided to use clear or transparent nylon sewing thread which I've used before for a bunny rabbit's whiskers. The only problem was that this thread was a bit too curly from being wrapped around the bobbin so I stretched a long piece out onto my ironing board and ironed it on the lowest setting. This worked to treat and made the nylon much straighter. Then I simply threaded this nylon onto the needle and took the needle through at different angles to create the whiskers, doing this at least four or five times. Before I show you how I gave the cat the whiskers out the top of the eyebrows I'm going to explain how you could secure these whiskers with glue. First I tested some super glue out on the cartoon style cat I'd felt previously. Oh that's right, just use me as a guinea pig why don't you? Oh great, now I look like I've permanently got food slopped over me chops. Oh, um, sorry, I thought it would be okay. Well that turned out badly. It did secure the whiskers really well but it left a dark crusty mark at the side of his mouth which I wasn't happy with. Funny enough, neither am I. Oh, stop complaining, you'll live. So instead I tested some cheap children's PVA glue on the same black wool. PVA tends to dry clear and hopefully it won't leave as much of a mark. Um, yeah, it still left a bit of a mark. Poor spider. Thank goodness spiders can't talk, eh? Sorry spider. But you could use a tiny dot of super glue on the nylon thread and then pull it through so it takes the glue into the wool, as I did here on the spider. It did hold it quite well, but I have to confess I've not secured the whiskers on my cat with any glue as it's for display only. I'm not selling her and it won't be handled by children, so I don't want to risk ruining the face with glue. Right, now for the eyebrow whiskers. I took my needle threaded with a straightened nylon down through the eyebrow and out under the chin of the cat until the eyebrow was about the right length. Then I trimmed the nylon thread as close to the chin as I could so you couldn't see that end. Each time I went into the eyebrow area I tried to make the angle slightly different so that they were spread out and looked like the cat image. Again before you pull them all the way through and trim them you could add a tiny amount of glue on the thread to secure them. So I hope this video has given you the confidence to have a go at adding fur to your needle felted animals. But before you add the fur you really need to get the shape and the proportion of the cat looking good and in this video I'll show you how I needle felted this cat step by step in the part one of this cat mini series. Thanks for watching.